Hi everyone, Chapter 7, A Dog's Promise. Thought I'd read it to you today. I sensed Chase had at ease and so did my boy. I could tell by the way he stiffened in his chair. His hands tightened on the wheels. Chase, Grandma said, I asked you what you're planning to do to the men in that vehicle. Chase had cleared his throat. Uh, there might be words exchanged, Mom. Please don't do anything foolish. This has gone far enough already. It'll be okay. I'd do better if you took Burke inside, though. Grandma frowned. Well, Burke vigorously shook his head. No, I should stay with you, Dad. I felt a tension swirl between them. I'd figured out that people mostly communicate by talking. But other times, they don't talk and communicate more with their bodies, like dogs. All right, Chase, Dad finally agreed. You stay, Burke. But Mom... Don't even start with me. If my grandson is here, I'm here. You've turned this family, this into a family affair, so we'll face whatever, whoever is in that car as a family. The car turned up our driveway. When it stopped, men exited out all the doors. They were wearing hats on their heads. What the heck, one of them shouted. He had a small amount of hair around his mouth. They walked in a manner similar to the way the cars moved, in line, one behind the other headed toward the wood pile. I sat watching them carefully. I did not like how mad the hairy mouth man seemed. His angry walk was more pronounced than anything I'd seen from Chase yet. I instinctively knew that these men were not friends and that I was not to wag unless maybe they started tossing treats. Good afternoon, Chase Dad greeted dryly. The men were picking over the car in the wood pile. Hairy mouth turned to Chase Dad. You shot it. I thought it was going to run over my son and his dog. This drone is worth more than a million, million dollars, you stupid moron. Chase Dad gestured with his pipe. You come on a man's property without being asked. He's got a loaded shotgun. You insult him to a face and I'm the moron? All the men stopped looking at the car and were staring at Chase Dad's metal pipe instead. Chase, Grandma urged in the biggest, baddest whisper. I could feel the heat rising off Harry Mount's face. He turned to the men behind him. Jason, why don't you get them headed back? A man climbed up on top of one of the cars and began stabbing at it with his fingers. Every time he jabbed, the car beeped. Chase Dad shook his head. You and your robots are destroying a, a whole way of life here, and you don't even know it. Men and women who have real jobs, who could afford their own homes, have nothing. Harry Mount scowled. What are you hanging on to here? Things change? Adapt. Adapt? Chase Dad repeated softly. He looked away his mouth a bitter line. With the lurch, the line of cars backed up and swiveled and went down to the road and departed in tight formation. Only the one in the wood pile remained. I've, I've called a record drill, another man told Harry Mouth. Harry Mouth pointed a finger at Chase Dad. This is far from over, you know. I snapped my head up at the man's rage. You have more, you have more you need to say? Chase Dad's voice was quiet. But I heard anger sizzling on his every word. Your land is in our way, and now you've given us a way to take it from you, Harry Mouth said. I heard a faint twisting sound as Chase Dad tightened his grip on his pipe. I heard panting with anxiety, not at all able, able to understand any of this. Harry Mouth was sneering. Why don't you put your shotgun down? We'll see what you've got, old man. All right, Chase bent over and laid his pipe in the grass. Grandma made a small distressed noise, and I couldn't help myself. That tiny sound, I growled from deep in my throat, ready to launch myself at Harry Mouth, at all the men who were frozen, staring. You know, I, I don't know why it took me so long, but I'm kind of thinking this is a farm that Ethan went to as a child. Maybe that's why he sent him back to save it. Harry Mouth backed up, his palms out. You're sick and you're a dog on me. Burke, Chase Dad said. Burke slapped the arm of his chair. Cooper, down! I immediately went to his side and sat, but, by, but my eyes never left that stranger. We're here getting our property, and you're putting a vicious dog on it. Harry Mount said, I did no such thing, Chase Dad seed. Soon as we leave, I'm calling animal control, Harry Mount declared. Cooper didn't do anything, Burke cried. The man laughed, but it was an ugly sound I did not wet. Not how I see it. A big truck was coming down the road. It turned slowly up our drive. Chase Dad wiped his face with his sleeve. I've had enough of this. You're on my property and you're no longer welcome. Take your damn harvester and go. With a dis 
derisive snort, Harry Ma turned away and walked over to his friend. I started in surprise. A dog had broken from the tree lines and was romp romping down the hall toward us, wagging. I instantly turned away from the people and scampered joyly, joyously to meet it. A dog! When I was close enough for her scent to wash over me, I realized it wasn't just a dog. It was lazy. It was lazy. I stopped and exultantly lifted my leg on a small tree. Lacey barreled into me, and I was so happy I was crying. We frolicked and tumbled and jumped on each other. Burke shouted, Cooper! Cut through my elation. I turned and dashed back to be with him, and Lacey was right there, pressed up against me as if doing steady as we ran. Burke laughed when we near, nearly crushed. Burke laughed when we nearly crashed into his chair. Who are you? He reached out and snagged Lacey's collar. She sat obediently, and I took advantage of the moment to grab the back of her neck and my mouth. Get down, Cooper. I did not see how get down applied to this situation. Who is this dog? Chase Dad asked. Burke was still pulling on Lacey's collar. Dogs, cut it out. I'm trying to read her attack. Okay, Lacey, Lacey, is that your name? Good dog, Lacey. Burke released her collar, and Lacey flopped on her back, and I dove on her. Aware as I did so that the remaining vehicles at the woodpile were leaving down the driveway, Chase Dad grunted. Looks like the show's over, Burke. I have to get back to the work. When your brother shows up, send him out to get to the orchard for me. Dad, what happens if they call animal control on Cooper? I glanced up at my name, and Lacey froze also. I don't know, son. Will you get in trouble for shooting the drone? Can they really take our land? It is what it is, Burke. They want to make trouble? They'll make it. Chase Dad picked up his acrid pipe and trudged away. Burke sighed unhappily. Even though I was chasing on Lacey, I took a moment to go to him and let him know his dog was here. Grandma watched me play with Lacey. Lacey, she mused. Who does she belong to? Her tag says the Zanes, Burke replied. You know, the Chinese family. Grandma looked surprised. Really? I wonder what she's doing here. They live all the way across the valley. I guess I'll call them to come get her. I was proud to show Lacey I knew Paul as I helped... Burke back up the driveway, but she seemed unimpressed. She sniffed up appreciate, appreciatively at Grandma's meat-scented hands, though impressed with them. Before long, we had tumbled off the porch and were wrestling on the grass. Burke sat and watched us smiling. A car stopped at the bottom of the doorway, and Grant got out. He stood and gaped in bafflement at the wooden, at the fallen woodpile, then walked up to where Lacey and I were playing. Lacey. I decided would probably be Grant's dog, but the two of us would sleep together on Burke's bed. Looks like I missed some excitement, Grant observed. What happened? Dad said you're supposed to go to the orchard. Ugh. Grant frowned. So I can't even get something to eat first? I didn't say that, Grant. He just said to give you the message. Grant blew out a puff of air. So what happened? A dr drone came up the driveway. Dad shot it with a shotgun. What? Grant's mouth dropped open. Seriously, no lie. And they're saying they're going to call animal control and cat Cooper and see, sue us and take our land. Huh? This dog? This dog theirs? The robo farmers? No, that's Lacey. She just wandered up the middle of it all. You heard you heard me about Cooper. Yeah, and her farm. Yeah, guess we'll see what happens. Jesus, you're as bad as dad. Burke was quiet for a moment. And I looked up at him, giving Lacey a chance to pounce on me. How was basketball? Grant made a disgusted noise and sat down on a chair, wrestling off his boots. Lacey broke off to play to go sniff them, so I followed suit, even though I had smelled them already. I had to borrow someone else's shoes, and they were too big. I played like the clown. What's it in my shoes? Broken glass? Just drops of our airplane glue. I already scrubbed them out of there. When I said I needed to borrow shoes, anyone in the car... Everyone in the car went quiet. You know why? Because they were so poor, we can't afford shoes. Well, we are poor. God, it was humiliating. I hated every second. I hate my life. You going to go help, Dad? Grant looked at Burke for a long moment. Lacey and I stopped playing, sensing something. No, I'm going to get something to eat first. Burke stayed out on the porch while Lacey and I rolled into the yard. She was heavier now but I was even bigger, still able to flip her on her back. She lay panting, her tongue lolling, while I chewed gently on her neck and her feet. My affection for her poured through me and out from my mouth, our jaws shivering as I nibbled on her. 
I was glad Lacey had found me because we belonged together as surely as I belonged with Bert. Eventually exhausted, I lay sprawled on Lacey, barely conscious. I was so tired I didn't register a new car in our driveway, though Lacey and I both leapt to our feet when we heard a girl's voice call, Lacey! A girl and a man stood up out of the car, and Lacey ran straight to them. So I, so I did too. I'd seen this girl before. She seemed to be about Burke's age. It had black hair and dark eyes. Lacey, what are you doing all the way over here? She sang in a high, affectionate voice. Lacey jumped to lick her face. So I shoved my head back under the girl's hand to get petted. Behind us, Grandma appeared at the screen door. The man said something to the little girl, and she nodded and ran up to the porch. Burke swiveled her, his chair, and she moved past him to the door. Thank you for calling us and saving Lacey, she said to Grandma. But the girl was staring at Bert, and he was staring at her. Grandma opened the door and came out. Of course, honey, what's your name? Wenling Zhang, ma'am. You can call me Grandma Rachel, and this is Bert. Bert raised a hand. Grant? I heard Chase Dad yell from across the field. He was marching toward the house in a way that felt a little short of his angry walk. More of a not completely happy walk. What grade are you in, Bert asked of me. Uh... I'll be an eight, the girl said. Me too. Oh, do you go to Lincoln Middle School? I don't think I've seen you before. No, I'm homeschooled. You might have seen my brother Grant, though. He was at Lincoln, but now he's going to be a freshman. Oh, no, I don't know him. But seventh grade is like being a new inmate in prison. So I tried to avoid the older kids. Bert laughed, nodding. Chase's dad rode up the ramp and into the porch. He seemed a little confused to see the girl. Where's your brother? He asked Bert. I gave him some pie, Grandma replied. I need Grant's help. He can have pie after dinner, Chase Dad let, looked out and saw the man standing by a truck. What is he doing here? Chase Dad headed back down the ramp. Now he was doing his angry walk. Chase! Grandma cautioned. Hey, Chase Dad yelled. End of chapter seven. Well, I hope homeschooling is going well for you. Um, see you guys on Friday. Bye.